What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm doing something a little bit extra special to me. Some of you guys know this, but not all of you do, and that is that my family really is a very big home brewing family. My sister, my brother, and my father all have brewed beer for a much longer time than I have. And uh, my dad really was the one who got everybody into it. He's the man who started this whole tradition and you know, really ignited this whole passion for everybody in the family. So when it comes down to it, he's one of my favorite people to share beer with and to talk brewing with. And so my parents are coming to visit in less than a week and I have no beer on tap. Like I have really royally screwed up. There is nothing left in the kegerator except for some sparkling water. So I really need to get something brewed really fast and get it on tap really fast so that I can have something to talk about and to share with my dad when he comes to visit. And in this type of situation, the absolute best tool for the job is a kvike yeast. So today I'm combining that need for a beer very quickly with a new kvike that I have never tried before, which is Espy, and some new hops that I have yet to play with that I've really been wanting to play with, and that is Brew One. So my goal is to have a complete grain to glass in about five days with the SP Kvike combined with the Brew One hops to give us a sort of like pineapple pale ale, uh, I'm hoping is what comes out of this. So stay tuned and we'll see how well this goes. Before we jump into this video, I wanna thank a few organizations for helping make it possible. Firstly, Northern Brewer, because they are the place that you can get all of the ingredients that you need to brew this batch of beer yourself. And secondly, Clawhammer Supply, they manufacture the system that I'm gonna brew this on today. Today I'm using the 10 gallon 240 volt electric brewing system. So the recipe is a really simple one. We're doing a smash beer today, single malt and single hop. Uh, so the single malt that I'm gonna be using is 12 pounds of Viking pale ale malt. Um, I've never tried Viking malts before, but a lot of people say they're very good. So today we're gonna be trying out their regular old pale ale malt. Um, secondly, for hops, I'm gonna be using only brew one in this batch. All the brew one I have is 13% alpha acid. Brew One is a relatively new hop to the market, but it's been around for a few years. Uh, and it's a dual purpose hop, but it's a very popular one when it comes to brewing pineapple forward hazy IPAs. And I'm really hoping that that pineapple character will come through in this beer. So we're gonna go real heavy on the late hopping additions and we're also gonna incorporate a dry hop. But because it is a dual purpose hop, there's no issue bittering with this one either. So I'm gonna be going ahead and using half an ounce at 60 minutes to bitter, and that'll get us about 23 IBUs. And then at 20 minutes, I'm adding another half an ounce for 14 IBUs. At 10 minutes, I'm adding three quarters of an ounce for 13 IBUs. And then at the zero minute mark, I'm dumping in two ounces of brew one. So going real heavy on that late boil. And then we'll go ahead and we'll ferment this. And then because it's a kvike fermentation, the uh, fermentation is gonna go incredibly fast. And I'm not gonna really have a chance to dry hop in the fermenter because I wanna get this on tap quickly. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and add two ounces in a dry hop to the keg. I haven't done this in a while, um, but when I do, it usually turns out pretty tasty. So we'll do that. And I'm hoping that the beer doesn't stick around too long uh, so that you don't get those grassy notes that come from dry hopping in the keg for too long. Uh, granted, I can always pull it out of the keg if I need to or transfer it to a different keg if I've got one on standby which I do because I have no beer in any kegs right now. So that might be the path forward if it starts to get kind of grassy. For the waterproof on this one, I mean, this is gonna be like a juicy pale ale, an American pale ale style. So I'm going for something that is gonna really promote that juicy character and cut down on the bitterness. Even though we are adding some bitterness to this, the water profile is exactly the same as I made for that treehouse style IPA, which turned out amazing, super juicy. So we're gonna go with a water profile of 128 parts per million of calcium, 10 parts per million of magnesium, 39 parts per million of sodium, 219 parts per million of chloride, 130 parts per million of sulfate, and zero parts per million of bicarbonate. In order to get that water profile, I'm gonna be starting with eight gallons of Poland spring water and adding to that five grams of gypsum, three grams of Epsom, three grams of sodium chloride, and 10 grams of calcium chloride. And uh, the reason why I use spring water now instead of distilled water, just in case you haven't heard this before, is that I just prefer it because it's easier to buy those large four or five gallon jugs. And there's really no real distinguishable difference when we're building up to a water profile that is as heavy in minerals as this one is. There are residual minerals between three to five 
parts per million of various types of minerals in there, but nothing really too significant. And it doesn't make sense to me to buy the more expensive distilled water when we're adding 100 and 200 parts per million of some particular minerals. For the yeast on this one, we're using Espeekvike, which is one that I've never tried before. And that's actually one that I can't really find too much information out on the internet about, other than a few people who've used it a few times who say either it is incredibly fruity and incredibly heavy on the passion fruit note, um, or it produces a rum-like, cognac-like, um, dark fruit note. One of those two things is true, maybe both is true, depending on what fermentation temperatures we're looking at. So it's gonna do one of two things. It's either going to complement all of the tropical fruit character we're getting for the brew one, or it's gonna add that kind of rum-like character and it's gonna taste more like a rum punch character. Whether it ends up tasting like a tropical pale ale or a uh, tropical rum punch pale ale, either of those things I think is going to be a success and I think it's gonna work in either direction. So I'm very, very excited to see what happens. So for the mash, I want this to be a relatively high finishing final gravity. I hope it ends up between 1012 and 1015 or maybe 1018 depending on how this goes. Um, but I'm not using any sort of dextrin malt like Carapils, Carafoam, etc. like I did in the Treehouse IPA. So having that final gravity that's a bit higher adds extra sweetness and adds extra character but most importantly when it's combined with a water profile I'm using and when it's combined with that heavy dose of late hops it makes the beer juicy. And that's the whole goal here. The point here is that I'm using a single malt without any extra flaked grains or high dextrin malts, and I'm going to use a higher mash temperature to achieve a higher dextrin character in the beer, which will prevent that final gravity from getting too low. So my choice of mash temperature is 156 Fahrenheit, and I'm hoping that that will get enough dextrin in there to be balanced and juicy, but not so much that it's overly thick and heavy for the percent of ABV that it is and for the style. This beer probably will be hazy when it's served just simply because it will be uh, young, it will be dry hopped into keg, and it won't necessarily have time to have everything flocculate out, and that's fine. Um, but I don't expect that it would stay hazy for a long time. It might clarify because I'm not adding any sort of flaked grains or high protein malts or dry hopping. Uh, with yeast active, so it's possible that um, it ends up clarifying over time, which is fine. Uh, I don't really care about that. All that matters to me is that this beer tastes good and is fully fermented by the time my dad gets here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get brewing. I added eight gallons of spring water to my 10 gallon 240 volt claw hammer supply system and started to heat that up to the mash temperature of 156 Fahrenheit. As this was going on, I milled out the grain and I measured out my water salts and added those to the strike water as it was heating up. Once the strike water had reached my target mash in temperature, I mashed in with the entire grain bill and I was sure to stir it up thoroughly to disperse the grain evenly and avoid any clumping. As soon as this was confirmed, I let the mash rest. And then about 10 minutes in, I took a pH reading to confirm that my predicted wort pH was going to be in the right place, and it was. It was about 5.33, uh, which is pretty good for this type of beer. So I didn't do any sort of adjustment whatsoever for my mash pH and let it continue for a full hour. After an hour had passed, I raised up the mash temperature to 170 for a mash out and held it there for about 15 minutes. And then I pulled out the grain basket and let that drain for another 15 minutes. As I was letting the grain basket drain though, I heated the entire thing up to a temperature slightly below boiling just to get a jump start on everything. Once I reached the actual boil for real, I added in my first hop addition, which was half an ounce of brew one. Then about 40 minutes later, at the 20 minute mark, I added in another half ounce of brew one. 10 minutes after that, I added in my 10 minute hop addition, which was three quarters of an ounce of brew one and some yeast nutrient. And then 10 minutes later, at the zero minute mark, I added in my final hop addition, which was two ounces of brew one. I let that hop addition steep in the wort as I conducted a 15 minute whirlpool uh, to get all the hop debris piled up in a nice neat cone in the center of the kettle prior to transferring over into my fermenter and chilling. As soon as the whirlpool was complete, I ran the wort through my counterflow chiller and transferred it into my Brewbuild X2 fermenter. I was careful at this point though not to over chill uh, as this is Kvike and we want to make sure we pitch it nice and hot. I only brought it down to about 85 or 95 degrees to get that pitch temperature correct. At this point I also measured the OG and it came in at 1057 which was just one point short of my target OG so not too bad overall. As soon as all of my work was transferred over into my fermenter, I added about a minute's worth of pure oxygen 
So just about one liter of oxygen uh, into the fermenter and then pitched my yeast directly in from the slurry in the packet. At this point, I set my temperature controller to maintain 85 degrees uh, fermentation temperature and let it ferment. All right, so let's talk about fermentation for this beer. So first of all, Aspik Fike is not exactly easy to find uh, outside of online retailers. So if you're looking at your local homebrew shop and they don't carry that many Fikes, um, I would recommend looking at the Voss strain or the Hornendal strain if you can find either of those. Other popular ones like Lutra um, or Upshug or Oslo probably are not going to work particularly well in this particular beer. Upshug might, but Hornendal and Voss really are the ones that I'd recommend looking for otherwise because they are the ones that are going to kick out so much more tropical fruit character, citrus character, things that are going to complement the type of beer that we're trying to make here today. Otherwise, you can use the others and they will work fine, they will make beer, but it will not necessarily be as tropical and or as juicy as it otherwise might be. When using Kvike, there's a couple things to be aware of. Number one, make sure you're getting adequate nutrients into your wort. This does mean most likely that you're gonna need to add some yeast nutrient and generally about double the amount you would otherwise add to a standard Saccharomyces uh, based fermentation. So I recommend adding about five grams of Y yeast beer nutrient. That tends to work pretty well. Also, you want to pitch this Kvike hot and you want to ferment it hot. Uh, so in my case, I'm shooting for about 85 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit for the fermentation. This will keep the Kvike happy and it will keep it fermenting actively and it will finish out that fermentation hopefully within three to four days. You can theoretically go up to about 100 degrees Fahrenheit but that does get a bit risky. It might be a little too hot in those cases but you can also ferment it on the lower end between 75 and 80 Fahrenheit might do the job but it will ferment much slower and it may potentially drop out early and not complete its fermentation if you keep it too cool. If you want to speed things up even more, you can also spun your fermentation if you happen to have a unit tank or a pressure capable fermenter or you're fermenting in a keg. All of these things work. So just adding a spunding valve at the last day or two of fermentation set to about 15 PSI will help that. Um, you will probably end up with reduced ester activity, but overall you'll have your beer ready to go and fully carbonated probably by the time it's ready to keg. So that will shave another couple days off of the process if you're trying to make it go quickly. That's what I'll be doing. Um, just simply because I want to have this ready by the time my dad walks in the door. And also, as I mentioned during the recipe, we'll be dry hopping this one in the keg. But if you have more time than I do, I do recommend dry hopping in the fermenter if you can. What I recommend doing if you have the capacity to do so is crashing your fermentation down to 60 Fahrenheit after it's finished its fermentation after about three or four days. This is going to drop a bunch of yeast to the bottom of the fermenter and then you add your dry hops and leave them in there for about three to five days. If you're doing this at this lower temperature, you're going to avoid a couple things. Firstly, hop burn, which is a phenomenon where you get a very astringent dryness and harshness at the back of your throat from drinking a heavily dry hopped beer that's a little young. Secondly, you're also going to prevent something called hop creep um, at this lower dry hopping temperature as well. Hop creep being the production of diacetyl or a buttery flavor um, that occurs when hops and yeast interact at a higher temperature. There's essentially an enzyme that is in hops that unlocks additional sugars for the yeast to ferment again. And if you let your yeast and your hops intermingle at a higher temperature like that for a few days and you package too early after that, you will end up seeing diacetyl and tasting diacetyl about a week or two into actually having it kegged. If that's your situation, you should do a diacetyl rest after your dry hop is done um, and then do a forced diacetyl test heating a sample of wort up to 150 Fahrenheit and seeing if you can smell any diacetyl. That's generally a good practice to do with every beer, if you can. Um, but that does help to confirm whether or not there's any in there. Alternatively, you can use an enzyme known as ALDC. Someone has been diligently in the comments section telling me every single time I mention hop creep that there's something called ALDC to prevent it. Have not personally tried this, but it is worth pointing it out uh, for folks. So if you've done that, well, let me know. But otherwise you can just dry hop cold in the keg like I'll be doing. It should be good for a week or two, but you might get some grassy off flavors if uh, that develop if the beer is sitting on those hops for too long. And if that's the case, I recommend doing a closed transfer from the keg that has your dry hops in it to another fresh keg so that you can get them off the dry hops and hopefully reduce that grassy flavor. I don't really expect that this beer is gonna be sticking around too long, so we'll see how that actually ends up. So really, fingers crossed that I get this done and ready by the time my dad gets here, and I hope we can actually get him on the channel to taste it with me. Anyway, I will catch you guys in a few days. Cheers.
All right, so the fermentation went very, very well. It was unsurprisingly very fast. I found myself hitting that final gravity of 1017 in about three days of fermentation. Interestingly enough, uh, I fermented this one in my Brewbilt X2 fermenter with a heating pad. And my basement is around 55 Fahrenheit this time of year. And that heating pad was actually only able to get the whole thing up to about 78 Fahrenheit, which isn't really even all that hot for Kvike. And uh, still ripped through it in three days. So that was pretty cool to see. So the beer is called BD Brew One uh, because I've been devoting way too much time to playing Jedi Survivor lately. And uh, it comes in at 5.3% ABV and a perfect 50 IBUs. So for the appearance of the beer, it is an amazing, beautiful, golden, hazy color. Uh, the haze is not particularly thick in the beer, and I expect that that'll probably drop out eventually with time. However, I am super happy with the overall appearance of it because it looks exactly like I'd expect a hazy pale ale to look. A nice light white head on top of it uh, that does not last forever, but does leave a good layer on the surface and good lacing that coats the glass. All right, so now let's go in for aroma. The aroma on this one is very juicy. There's a nice undertone of um, bready, uh, chewy, semi-sweet malt. And then there's a ton of this nice tropical hop aroma, which is definitely trending towards pineapple. There's also a nice mix of tangerine and citrus in there. But now let's go in for mouthfeel and texture. Mm. <laughs> so the mouthfeel in this one is very similar to that of a hazy IPA. It's a nice, soft and silky texture, a little bit of creaminess in there. Um, medium body overall, uh, no hard edges whatsoever, and uh, just a nice, soft, easy drinking experience. There's really nothing too special about that. I mean, a lot of that comes from the water profile. Even with a single grain like this, you can still get a good, nice, soft mouthfeel appropriate for the hazy IPA or hazy pale ale style just with that water profile. It's amazing how that works. Anyway, now we're gonna go ahead and go in for flavor. And this is a really, really interesting beer. This thing is absolutely delicious. Mm. I could drink this probably by the liter. It is a perfect balance of malt and hops. The maltiness on this comes through first and it comes through as a very like bready, cereally, kind of honey-like grain character. Um, very pleasant character overall. Um, and I'm very happy with the way the Viking Pale performed. Uh, quite a nice malt. And then of course we get a lovely punch of hops coming through here. This particular set of hop flavors is extremely, extremely elegant and delicious. It balanced itself perfectly. It's not too hoppy. There's enough of a balance of bitterness there to counteract the malt sweetness, of course, and that's what you want in any beer. Um, but in this case, we have uh, a really good emphasis towards the flavor, and the flavor on this is coming through, indeed, as advertised, Dole Fruit Cup Pineapple. Uh, pineapple juice flavor. There's certainly a little bit of a citrus note in there coming through as like a tangerine, maybe? And there's a little teeny bit of kind of like a Hallertau-like spice, almost. A Hallertau-like herbal character. Um, I'm actually pretty good, pretty big fan of the way that all blends together, especially in this pale ale. But then the real interesting thing that came through here, the Espeak Fike. That particular yeast really made for a phenomenal blend of everything. The Espy and the Brew One are a fantastic pair because pineapple is a great flavor, but the SP is providing a boost to everything, and it gives this delicious grape juice flavor um, that kind of bolsters the whole thing up and gives it extra dimension. It's not giving me any dark fruit flavors like dark dates or, or raisins or figs or anything like that, but it is giving a lovely rounding grape juice note. I mean, that's, that is what this is, like red grape juice, like Welch's grape juice. That's what's coming out of that. On top of that, you get that pineapple fruit cup. You get that lovely bready malt or character. It's definitely the best pale ale I've done in a while. But among all of the Kvike smash beers that I've done over the last year or so, this is definitely topping the list. This is the best one, um, without a shadow of a doubt. 
Maybe the Lutra German Pils is close because that beer turned out phenomenal too. But as far as hops and yeast marrying up in a beautiful way, this one takes the cake. It's a perfect spring or summer sipper. It's delicious, it's not too strong, and it has that lovely refreshing quality um, that you get out of these nice pineapple hops. And to top everything off, it was all done in less than a week, which just makes it perfect for a repeat brew. And now that I'm finished with my tasting notes, I got a special treat for you guys. I was able to brew this in time for my dad's visit, and he definitely enjoyed it. So um, I convinced him to show up on the channel, and uh, now we're going to hear from the legend himself, my dad. No comment. My, uh, my dad here, as I said earlier in the video, he is a foundational person in terms of bringing home brewing into this family. Um, and dare I say, the, the patriarch of the whole thing. Oh. He's been homebrewing pretty much longer than I've been alive. Uh, and yeah, started the whole thing. And uh, so now three of his children, including myself, have uh, delved down this rabbit hole. So <laughs> anyway, w as you can see, mm. we succeeded. I had the beer brewed and mm. um, I literally kegged this within two minutes of dad walking through the door. <laughs> so I would call that a success. Um, oh. And so yeah, here we are a day later. So we let it sit for a day and um, wow. I'm gonna have him taste it and see what he thinks. So oh. uh, why don't you go ahead? Excellent, well, thank you very much, Steve. All right, well, anyway, to uh, wonderful experience and uh, glad you're carrying on the tradition so, <laughs> so ably. Cheers. Yeah, prost. Mmm, boy, schmeckt gut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a little German history in this family. Mmm, <laughs> wow. Excellent, excellent. So, so yeah, uh, I suppose, um, mm. what do you taste? What do you uh, pick mm. up on in the beer? Beer? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. I generally want uh, that to be the part of it. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, no, it's amazing, utterly amazing that it hasn't been. Uh, working longer. Mm. Yeah, so I brewed this on Monday. Mm. It, it's uh, outstanding. It's very drinkable, uh, I would say, and there's a smoothness to it as, as well. Um, the lack of hops uh, you know, being overpowered, uh, but it's a good balance. Uh, and biggest thing, utterly amazed, it, tastes as if it had been sitting for three weeks at least, I would say. Okay, yeah. So very impressive. So you've, you've never very used that by, kind of yeast before, right? Uh, I don't believe I have, no. Okay. No, it's mostly Saf Hill 04s and 05s. And, uh, it always turns out well. No, but this is excellent, Steve. Thank yeah, you I'm glad so you much. like it. Yeah. glad you... Uh... Yeah, it's, it's not exceptionally heavy either, mm -hmm. and that's what is, is quite nice especially late evenings like this. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm really happy I got it brewed in time. I'm really happy that oh, uh, yes, yes, you enjoy surprise. it as well, especially that's yes, most important. Yes. So. Right, yeah. Mm, that pineapple uh, taste comes through. It's yeah, I think as it warms good. up a bit more, mm -hmm. you get a little bit more of that is. character. What's okay. your favorite kind of thing to brew? What do you so. like to normally brew? Uh, beer, right? yes, 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 of course. <laughs> Can't take them anywhere. Of uh, course. <laughs> Um, the German alt, you know, I, I would say. But I'm glad you're carrying on, carrying on the tradition here. <laughs> yeah, well, well it's uh, very good. definitely yeah. one thing that um, I don't think I would have probably dabbled in if you uh, had oh, not yeah. first yeah. dabbled in it yourself. So oh, um, um, excellent. I say, Grant, I, I'm very grateful that you did and hey. very thankful that uh, yes, yes. you taught me so okay. much about it. So. Ah, you yeah. did. No, you did. S someone asked me, why did you get into home brewing in the first place? And I said, well, it was when, you know, a six pack of Jenny Cream Ale went up in price. <laughs> I think when it hit a dollar fifty, I said, that's ridiculous. I can make it for less than In like that. 1995? No, no. Or way earlier before, than that. Way before that. Well, if Sumerians could do it, yeah, then, and old Germans could do it, then figured we could do it as well. That's true. So you started on a glass carboy. Uh, oh, yes. And mm -hmm. you had extract batches, right? Yes, yes. Yep. It, and you did that for was. a long time. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, right, yeah. quite, quite a long time, but I don't know if it was Karen that got me more interested in starting in with the grains. Yeah. Right, so you then you add, you, you graduated to all grain. Um, uh, yes. A couple yes. years ago now? Yeah, I think. probably yeah. so. And mm -hmm. so you've been enjoying doing that, and you grow mm -hmm. your own hops mm -hmm. as well? Yes, and yes. Have a good crop this year. Yeah. Looks like they're starting to climb up the pole. Did yours mm -hmm. that? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Prost. Mm. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Dad. <laughs> Continue the good work. <laughs> yeah, and I'll do my best. As, so. Yeah, as one vulture said to another, carry on. That's how we're ending it. <laughs> anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please go ahead, hit that like button and subscribe as well for more content like this. Comment down below with your thoughts on everything. What do you think about this whole process? Have you used Brew One? Have you used SP? Have you used Viking Two Row? If you want to support the channel, there's a number of different ways to do so, but first and foremost, you can pick up a t-shirt like this one down in my merchandise store, which is in the description. So check that out for some more different designs. Um, that way you get something out of it, I get something out of it, it's a great thing. Secondly, I have a Patreon and my Patreon supporters are really very helpful in uh, supporting this channel and giving it a big needed boost in production quality over the last couple of years. So I really do appreciate all of the support that you guys have given, that's been fantastic. I also have uh, channel memberships and there's the super thanks button. If you're inclined to hit either of those, they also help out quite a bit. There's an Amazon store where you can find all of the uh, brewing equipment that I recommend, my filming equipment, stuff like that. So that's in there if you're curious. And then I'm also available on Instagram and Facebook as The Apartment Brewer. So check those links out for some future content you'll see coming to the channel very soon. Anyway guys, thank you so much for sticking around and watching to the end of the video. If you're still here, that means a lot to me because I put a ton of work into these things and I know they can get kind of long, but um, it is really what I love to do. So thank you guys very much for being here, and um, yeah, until the next one, cheers. So anyway, uh, this is my dad here, John, so... Uh, <laughs> Hans. Hans. What? Hans Hepreis. Yeah, well, uh, yes, I'm going to need to do some editing. <laughs> uh, let's, let's just... Start again? Yeah. All right, okay. from the top. <laughs> All right, when are we going to sample? You could be silly, but like, we'll get to it. Yes. Oh, boy. <laughs>